Welcome back to the big broadcast, Coast to Coast and Boda to Boda on iHeartRadio. Also, our good friends over there at Stitcher. We're on Stitcher.com as well. Talk shoe, all the regular spots, 24-7 if you come in late or want to hear something again, JiggyJaguar.com. Best of 24-7. We, uh, as soon as this program goes off the air, we stick it into rotation and it replays 24 hours until the next one. And then, of course, over the weekend, we have uh, certain best of shows that we throw on during the weekend. Um, Robert Shane is going to be with us here in a few moments. And uh, Robert has got some incredible news uh, about uh, Vladimir Putin. Uh, this This just continues to get... Stranger and stranger and stranger. Now, um, what is this stuff, Robert? About he wants to get uh, because he he wants to get the courts over there to pass a law, basically, so he can do uh, basically whatever he wants. Which, from what I can tell, is pretty much what he's doing now. <laughs> okay. Well, as you know, James, the uh, United States and some of the Western uh, European countries have uh, embarked on a uh, course of economic sanctions against yep. Russia and particularly uh, uh, the Russian president, Vladimir Putin, yep. by uh, imposing economic sanctions. Now, uh, what's turned up is that one of his uh, buddies is a fellow named Arkady Rottenberg, who's worth... Uh, uh, reportedly four billion dollars and the Italian government this past week seized property from him worth 40 million dollars which included a luxury hotel in Rome and two Sardinian villas Wow the, the, the upshot of that is that Putin fires back by having a bill play a draft law introduced this week uh, into the Duma, which is the Russian legislature, and they'll yep. pretty much do what he wants, to permit Russian courts to authorize the confiscation of assets of foreign nationals on Russian territory. Now, what I'm told is that this is one of the reasons that the uh, stock market uh, took a 264-point dive on the, uh, on the Dow, the other day because news came out that Putin uh, could move to seize assets of foreign companies operating in Russia. That hasn't happened yet, but it's going to be uh, on the books to allow him to do that. So th this guy is uh, looking to control his situation. He also uh, can control what happens to the uh, European economy. If he were to shut off the uh, delivery of natural gas and energy to the uh, Western European countries, he'd not only put them in a deep freeze, literally, but economically as well. So uh, he's not somebody who's <laughs> shrinking back, but he's no. coming up with all sorts of weapons. Well, this this whole thing about being able to seize assets from companies that are operating there, uh, that just sounds so insane. But it it can work. That that that's just the insane part about it. I know it does work, and and of course, you know, to my uh, knowledge of the situation, a lot of uh, Western companies including U.S. oil companies, Canadian oil companies, have made significant investments in Russian oil fields to upgrade their uh, capacity and also to uh, uh, refine what they uh, produce, in other words, develop refineries. Uh, those things are all up for grabs. And uh, you know, as the uh, situation escalates, he's not backing down from anything. No. Although... It looks like he and the uh, president of the Ukraine are engaging, at least in conversations. But uh, he, he sort of told uh, the Western nations, including us, to butt out of this situation because he's got more, <laughs> more, more things he can do than we can do to him. And uh, uh, he, he's not really concerned about how it affects the Russian population who seem to be 90 
five percent in back of him and, and in support of him. See that that is the thing. Uh, it, it, what was that the situation during during the Cold War? Were were there a lot of uh, I know when a, when a lot of odd decisions were being made over there was was, was did the people back that that administration at that time or oh yeah they were scared to death of us uh, you know when I was over there people were saying you, know, you had Ronald Reagan calling it the evil empire and uh, and and obviously everybody knew that the U S had uh, significant uh, nuclear weapons. And uh, they, they, they were more afraid of us than we were afraid of them, really. Yeah. And, uh, because pound for pound, we could outgun them. But, but that's even naive to talk about, I suppose, at this point, because one nuclear explosion could uh, decimate billions of people. So, yeah. Uh, I mean, we, we've come to a point in uh, history where the nuclear weapon really shouldn't be a weapon and what we're talking about is economic weapons now uh with with the uh economic weapon you mentioned something about um the the, the fact that he, he's going to be potentially cutting off uh gas supplies to europe uh what what is what is what is this going to entail well th this is his threat and uh just <laughs> One of the things that surfaced this past week was that the uh, Russia was supplying Poland with natural gas without any problem, and then the Poles were selling some of it back to the Ukrainians. So, because he, he's uh, leveraging his options in the Ukraine by not supplying them with uh, enough energy uh, to sustain what you know their economy. So the Polish government was selling back uh, Russian uh, energy to the Ukraine, and I, I don't know where that's going to lead, but, but <laughs> he needs to sell energy anyway to sustain his economy, and he knows that, but but it's always a threat out there. Now, uh, uh, this uh, this situation with the, uh, with, with, with the gas supply, uh, what would happen if, if that were to take place? Would, would somebody step up and and help uh, w with that cutoff, or yeah, the U.S. is now uh, developing a surplus of uh, natural gas, and we're building facilities to liquefy natural gas. So th these markets, if we could produce enough, uh, you know, global ships to uh, transport it, would uh, develop a hell of a good market for American companies at this point. So in, in so in an effect, Vladimir Putin would be helping our economy. <laughs> That's what you're he saying. He could. He could. <laughs> wow. Well, okay. <laughs> now, uh, now, now, Robert, uh, coming up this week, uh, what, what, what's going to be one of the big stories that we're going to see out of, out of that area of the world? I, I think you're going to see uh, some of the uh, Western European uh, leaders. Uh, get together to calm the waters as cold weather is coming on. They're not going to subject their people and their economies yeah. to uh, going cold or frigid. It, it's just not going to happen. They're going to make some kind of deals to overcome that. Yeah. And Putin is counting on that. We've got Robert Shanes with us today. Robert, uh, looking forward to uh, talking to you next week. Before we let you go, how do we, uh, how do we connect with you online? Well, you can connect with me online at rshanes at shanes.com, R-S-H-A-I-N-E-S at shanes.com. Well, good stuff. Well, Robert, I'm looking forward to talking to you next week, and uh, thanks for coming on today, my friend. Nice talking okay, with you. Okay, my pleasure, James. Appreciate it. We'll talk to you okay. soon. Robert Shane's with us today here on the program. We're going to take a uh, quick time out here. It's top of the hour time, and uh, when we come back, Stuart Vunner is going to join us. My good friend from AMFM247.com back here in a few moments. <laughs> 